this was in in 1989 there was a 13 year old uh, kid in the Virgin Islands that had a desire to swim in the Olympics he wanted to follow in the footsteps of his older sister he wanted to be an Olympic swimmer he was very athletic and had a lot of discipline and he would go swim every day there was an Olympic sized pool in the Virgin Islands, he'd show up every day and he'd listen to the trainers and listen to the coaches and he was putting in the work and the discipline. He had the aspirations of being an Olympic swimmer. Then in 1989, that's when Hurricane Hugo hit the Virgin Islands and tore that pool up. It was the only Olympic sized pool for this kind of training to get to the Olympic and it destroyed the pool. And when it destroyed the pool, it also destroyed that 13 year old's dreams. So now he would not be able to train for the Olympics. He'd never get to the Olympics in swimming. And he was depressed, down and dismayed. And you know what we call hurricanes. We call those acts of God. Somebody may ask, why would the uh, act of God, why would God act in a way to destroy a 13 year old with discipline, trying to do right with lofty dreams and destroy those dreams and those aspirations in his life? And the boy was all depressed and dismayed, disjointed. And then somebody saw him and said, I know you can't swim anymore, but you're kind of tall. Why don't you try basketball? So the 13 year old tried basketball. Matter of fact, he went out for his high school team when he was 14, first time playing organized ball. He got pretty good at basketball and ended up getting a scholarship to Wake Forest. He kept getting better. And after four years at Wake Forest, he was the number one draft pick in the NBA draft got so good that he won five NBA championships with the San Antonio Spurs, two-time MVP for the league, three-time finals MVP, voted one of the top 50 players in the history of the league. And then of course, Tim Duncan went on to make so much money in basketball that now he comes alongside and blesses people in so many different areas because Tim Duncan would never go on to be that Olympic swimmer that he wanted to be. But he would become that basketball player and that generous giver that God wanted him to be. And I believe that's what God is doing in some of our lives right now. That what you wanted to do, what you wanted to happen in your life, the storm has made it so it'll never happen. But what God wants to happen in your life is still going to happen because God uses storms to reposition us and redirect us and to get you to where he wants you to be. What's up, family? It's Pastor Jay. Listen, I'm so hyped that you decided to tune in to Eastern Star Church where Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. Listen, tonight is a Wednesday night, but before we hop into our debrief, um, I got to let you know, if you haven't already, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can subscribe to us on a podcast, wherever you get your podcast, the Eastern Star Church podcast. Make sure you subscribe, rank us, like us as we continue to share the word of God. And let's work together to spread this message um, to our family and our friends. And you can start even tonight as we debrief on Sunday's message God has not forgotten you by our senior pastor, Jeffrey Allen Johnson, senior. So before we get started, I need you to like this video, share this video, tag somebody in this video who you know they need Jesus and they need some encouraging message. And uh, let's comment tonight. Let's engage tonight as we engage in conversation uh, about the la uh, Sunday sermon, God has not forgotten you. This is a part of our debrief but we kind of just show the highlights of the sermon and go deeper into some of the points that pastors share with us on Sunday. And today, of course, I'm not by myself, um, but I have some scholarly colleagues and some friends of mine who decided to Zoom in with me uh, to help us debrief Sunday's message. Um, I have Brother Howard Stevenson, representing the Fishers Campus of Eastern Star Church. And then of course, my sister, Nicole Barnes, over at the Cooper Road campus. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and then we'll get started tonight. Sis, you can go ahead and get us started. 
Okay. Hey, y'all. What's up? My name is Nicole Barnes, like Pastor Jay said. Um, and I have been with Eastern Star Church, my God, forever. My godmother actually bought me to Eastern Star Church as a teenager so I could get baptized. And then I recommitted um, probably about 10 or so years ago. Um, and since then, I've been involved in a variety of ministries. Right now, I'm a minister. I worship lead at Cooper Road. I do a lot with our Ignite ministry. Shout out to the teens, Pastor P, uh, Sister Pamela, Sister Sandra. So I'm just grateful and I'm excited to be here tonight. Appreciate you. And before you go, uh, Brother Howard, I do have to say this, that Nicole is on her way graduating she's graduating this year in may and with her master's degree and so we are so proud of her and we look forward to what god is going to do through her where she she went to seminary here at cts in indianapolis so she's graduated from seminary with her master's of divinity degree shout out to sis thank you i appreciate it that black girl magic for sure hey brother howard go ahead sir hey man first of all congratulations minister nicole thank you Awesome. We celebrate and rejoice with you Thank in regards you. to that. As Pastor Jay shared with me, shared with you rather, uh, my name is Brother Howard Stevenson, and I have been a member at Eastern Star since 1992. Mm. So I'm kind of like Pastor. I try not to do math publicly, but I think that is 28 years. So I have been amazed to see how God has taken Eastern Star Church and taken us from faith to faith and glory to glory. I am honored to serve as one of our superintendents of our Sunday school um, at Eastern Star Church. I'm also one of our Bible study teachers and also serve in our Barnabas ministry with um, serving our new members that join the church. So it's an honor and a privilege to be with you, Pastor Jay and Minister Nicole. I'm so appreciative of having you both on. and. Brother Howard, you forgot to mention one thing about your 20 plus years of participating at Eastern Star Church, that you were my coach at the Eastern Star Church Basketball League. Exactly. <laughs> and let's go ahead and shout out our team, Pastor Jay. Uh, we did win the championship, so we, we got a ring um, in that regard. So I just have to admit that when you were playing on the youth basketball team all those years back then, a few decades ago, um, <laughs> If I had known I would have a pastor on my team, I would have played you a whole lot more and ran the entire offense through you. <laughs> well, the fact that you didn't uh, guaranteed us a, a ring. So that worked out. That worked out perfectly. <laughs> um, but listen, I'm so excited that they uh, both were able to come on. Um, and I'm excited about diving into Sunday's message. Um, and I do want to remind us, uh, Nicole brought it up earlier, that Ignite will be on at 8 p.m on our Instagram page, on Ignite's Instagram page, Pastor P will be live at eight o'clock to, to give a word for our teenagers and our youth. Uh, so make sure your team follows Ignite on Instagram and uh, meet Pastor P over there tonight at eight o'clock. Just a little shameless plug. Uh, so Sunday, Pastor preached a message out of Genesis as he continues uh, one of his secret series uh, dealing with Noah and sailing through a storm. Um, and so he continued in chapter eight, looking at verse one, where the Bible says, but God remembered Noah. And that right there is enough to just say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. That God remembers us. And so uh, the title of Sunday's message, if you haven't listened to it, please go and listen to it. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you go, listen to it. Our website, um, it's a tremendous sermon, very encouraging word, reminding us that despite of what we go through, uh, despite of what we lost, uh, despite of the effects of the storm, God still remembers us because God does not forget us and God does not forget you. And so I want to uh, bring my people in uh, as we uh, deal with this because he started this series dealing with the storm because of what we're experiencing now as a, in this world, in this nation, in this city, our community with the pandemic, with social distancing the virus and all these things that are going on and the effects of the virus. Um, and so he deals with this sermon about Noah dealing with his storm and hope that we can learn some lessons as we maneuver through our storms. Uh, so before we get into the message per se, I do want to ask you, uh, Brother Howard, what is God speaking to you during this time? What have you been meditating on? 
Um, what are some scriptures that have been kind of getting you through? What are some things that God is sharing with you during this time of pandemic, social distancing in this storm? My, my, my. God has been sharing a whole lot with me during this time. I would say as I study his word and pray to him, he has encouraged me to continue to walk my Christian walk like I should. And then also stay in fellowship with my family, my church family, my friends, and anyone that I have an influence on. Because the Bible does, Jesus does share with us, he says, let your light shine before men so that they may be able to see your good works and not glorify you, but glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And I think it's easy for us to let our light shine, if you will, when it's sun shining outside and everything is going okay yeah. and the business is tight and the finances are all right. But can we let our light shine in the midst of a pandemic mm. when we have problems that are going on? And I think that's when if people can see us shining in the midst of darkness in our lives. That's when they will see our good works and glorify our father in heaven. But in addition to that, I think, um, God is sharing with me that I need to continue to be intentionally in my productivity mm. and also my prayer life. You know, so during this extended stay that we have at home, it's not for us to be on vacation. <laughs> it's for us to continue with our vocation. You know, so we're not supposed to just chill and relax and not do anything. But are we going to continue to work? Are we going to work at becoming closer to God? Are we working on improving ourselves? Are we working on having a better prayer life or studying God's word? Or even for me and my business acumen, are we working to improve um, how we are productive in our careers? You know, so God is sharing that with me. And then also prayer, as I said, um, are we praying like we should during this pandemic? You know, and not just praying for ourselves and praying for our families, but are we praying for other people? Because I think that shows the maturity and the growth that we have in our faith if when we're praying for other people, just like Job when he was going through the situation that he was going through. And I won't rehearse all that he went through, but we know he went through a lot and his three friends came to see him and they were shocked by what he was dealing with. But the Bible says Job began to pray for his three friends. And the Bible goes on to say after he prayed for his three friends, that's when God delivered him from the situation that he was in. I think we reap what we sow even in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So if we continue to be productive and prayerful, God will see us through it. So I think that's what God has been laying on my heart. And that's what I've been trying to be intentional about. Definitely. That's good. That whole idea on prayer and, and then of course on productivity like you said this is not a vacation and i think it's easy for us to kind of uh, i know it is for me i should say make it personal easy for me to just kind of uh you know chill hit up netflix catch up on the shows kind of relax hang out and then it's like well i still got stuff i need to do like i still there's work that still needs to be done um and so using this time productively and wisely uh, so that when this whole thing is over, and as we will talk about later, there will be an end to the storm. Um, I want to be able to hit that ground running. So definitely that prayer and productivity, I can relate to that. Amen. Uh, Ms. Nikki B., how about you? What is God sharing with you during this time? I think um, to add on to what Brother Howard said, not just about praying, but for me, it's making sure that I'm listening. Yes. Like, in the midst of working full time, being in seminary full time, um, serving full time, like just always going, going. Those of you that have families, like we always get caught up in all of the doing, but am I really taking the time to listen and really pay attention to what God is saying and what God is trying to do? Um, and in the midst of that, while I've been listening to God, one thing that God has been saying to me clearly is that my expectations of him is too low. Mm -hmm. Like I have to, it's one thing for me to praise God. It's one thing for me to say, thank you, God, um, you know, for keeping me, for protecting me. However, um, 
what do I expect God to do more than what I can see right now? Like, I'm grateful that God has been able to keep me, keep me, right? But God is like, I have so much more for you. Just like you have higher expectations of people and of yourself, raise your expectations of me. So I've really been hearing that clearly from God. And you asked about a scripture um, that I've really been hanging on to. And it's really um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, which says... um, we are troubled on every side, but we are not distressed. We are not perplexed. We may be cast down, but we are not destroyed. And I think that is just so encouraging because it's like in the midst of us being troubled, in the midst of us um, feeling like we're forgotten, in the midst of us being shaken, we, we, ain't de- we are not destroyed because God is with us. Man, that's awesome. It reminds me of what Paul said to, to, to the church in Rome. Nothing can separate you from the love. That God has for you. Now the pandemic, he ain't he ain't limited by social distancing. He is Emmanuel. And uh what you said was very powerful. Raise your expectations of God. I think somebody need to com- comment that. Raise your expectations of God. Because you're right, a lot of us we believe that God can save our souls. We believe in God for salvation, but not sanctification, not transformation. We just think the miracles of God may be just hearsay. Um, but really taking our faith to another level and trusting and believing like God said he can do it. I know that God is going to pull through regardless of what it looks like. Period. Period. Yeah. And like really believe in that, like deeply. And I, you know, I believe for myself, like it's one thing where you, um, you go through the motions of, you know, being in church and, and doing all of the things, but it's like, do you really do you really, really believe that? Do you really trust that? Do you really believe that God is not going to just save you, but save all of those connected to you, that God is going to do something incredible out of this, that God is going to save lives, that God is going to disrupt the government? Like, put your trust in people, in God, not in the people, not in what we can see in front of us. So right. I'm excited when we get into this uh, sermon because Pastor Johnson touches on that. <laughs> yeah, he does. So let's hop into it. Uh, God has not forgotten you. Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, in, in, in this series dealing with Noah, as he's sailing through this storm, he gets to the end of the storm, and he is he, he becomes aware that God has not forgotten him. So, uh, Nicole, what is what was one thing that you pulled from this sermon, and just kind of looking at it, uh, big picture, what was one what was one thing that kind of helped you summarize what he was saying um that in the midst of whatever it may look like whatever is happening around us we may be broken we may have all of these things going on but god has not forgotten us god is with us despite what it looks like look up don't just yeah. look around look up and see what god has for us so yeah. It was an incredible sermon. Yeah. Brother Howard, how about you? It was an incredible sermon and powerful and very relevant to what we're dealing with um, mm-hmm. in the midst of this pandemic. I couldn't get past the first two words, Pastor Jay, but God. <laughs> but God. That's always, a, that's always a good shouting phrase. That's all you that's need to Phrase, and if I was a preacher, I would hoop that out. But God, <laughs> we know but is a conjunction word. It compares what happened before to what is getting ready to happen after that. And we know Noah had went through this 40 days of the flood, but God. And mm. that is a conjunction where what was before was bad and negative. But mm. God, we know we get ready to see some deliverance. We get ready to see that he's getting ready to bring Noah and his family out. So that's what I saw initially when, the, when Pastor Johnson preached that sermon. But God, and we know, but God is all throughout the Bible. It says the wages of sin is death. But. <laughs> but God. We have eternal life That's through right. Jesus Christ, but God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So that's what I initially saw. So even what we're dealing with now, if we know that even though we're in still in the midst of this, but God, and God's going to turn this around for us so we can shout right now and we don't have to wait until we see the, the other side of what we're going through. That's good. That's where you cue the organ. 
<laughs> it order right there, but God shall supply all of our needs. <laughs> but God. Yeah. Right. That's, all, that's good. That's good. Um, matter of fact, somebody probably need to comment that. You know what I mean? Remind themselves. It looks bad, but there's a conjunction uh, right. with God at the end of it that will come through and turn all of that around for your good. Uh, so, Pastor, when he first started this series a couple Sundays ago, um, looking at Noah, and even this past Sunday, reminding us uh, that God, we experience storms for, for different reasons, right? Uh, God, he says, will either send a storm. If he didn't send it, he will sanction it. Um, and we can't, we can't really confirm or deny whether God sent this storm, but we can say he sanctioned the storm that we're experiencing now. And as Pastor taught us on Sunday, that God sends storms for a multiplicity of reasons. And there's different reasons why God sends storms. And our theology and our understanding of storms must change uh, because the issue is, as he reminded us Sunday, that a lot of us, we go through a bad experience and then that bad experience shapes our understanding of God, sometimes in a negative way or in disbelief or not believing because of a bad experience. But pastor says we have that backwards. We need to get a healthy understanding of God's word, of God, of who God is, a healthy theology to help us view and have a, a, a certain understanding of our experience when we go through it. Um, and so when we go through a storm, when we experience a storm, there is something good that can come out of a storm. There is something productive that can come out of a storm. There's reminders and revelations that can come out of a storm. Um, and so he, he mentioned a few of those different reasons. Brother Howard, do you remember some of these reasons that he mentioned why we go through a storm? Yeah, he said it will destroy things that shouldn't be in our life. He can use a storm to discipline us. God says he chastens those who he loves. He can use a storm to direct us, and also he can use a storm to develop us. And Pastor Jay, you should have saw my wife and I are in our living room streaming the service on Sunday um, when he talked about God will use a storm to direct us in the way that we should go. And I couldn't get past that illustration that he used since he brought up our basketball team at the church. Um, he used the illustration. Uh, with Tim Duncan. And he said Tim Duncan was planning to be an Olympic swimmer. Um, and he had every intention of doing that. He was preparing for that. But a storm came and destroyed the Olympic sized pool that he was utilizing. So he couldn't, he couldn't do that anymore. And someone said, man, you're pretty tall. Why don't you give basketball a try? And we know what happened after that. He got five NBA championships and and he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But I was shouting on that because I could personally relate to that. Um, I'm going back to 1990 when I was applying for law school, and I applied to five law schools. And the first four law schools responded to me um, right away, and they accepted me. And I praise God for that. They accepted me into their law school. But there was one particular law school that I really wanted to go to. And I opened the letter and it said, we have you on the wait list. I said, a wait list? What's a wait list? That meant if four or five other people don't go, you'll move up the wait list and we'll accept you into the law school. I was disappointed because that door had been closed. That door had been shut. And I really wanted to go to that law school. Uh, but God opened the door for me to go to Indiana University Robert McKinney School of Law in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I came to law school here. And when I was in law school, I clerked for an agency downtown Indianapolis. I could not have done that if I had went to the other law school. Hmm. After I graduated from law school, I clerked on the Indiana Supreme Court as the first African American to do that in 1993. God opened that door when he shut another door because the Indiana Supreme Court is in Indianapolis, not where that other law school was. And then in 1992, when I was still in law school, a law school classmate invited me to this small church called Eastern Star. And I joined that, that church in 92. 
and I have been a member ever since, and God has taken the church and myself from faith to faith and glory to glory, and none of that would have happened if God didn't shut another door. So sometimes he shuts doors in our lives, and we get, I, I must admit, I was frustrated. I was mad. I thought I did pretty decent in undergrad, and how could they wait list Howard Stevenson? <laughs> but that other door that I went through, it was a better door, and God had something that he would be able to take me from faith to faith and glory to glory, mm -hmm. um, even in the midst of a frustrating situation that we're in. Mm. And that's a powerful testimony and a powerful reminder that God sends or sanctions storms for a reason. And um, it's, it's, that's the truth. And a lot of us have gotten to the places that we are and, and met the people that we've met and had the experiences that we've experienced all because of closed doors. And we praise God all the time that God opens doors. But every now and again, I have to make a lap for a closed door. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. So, so, Nicole, what are your thoughts on, on, those, on those different reasons? Destruction, discipline, direction, development, that God seems thrown for a reason. Yeah, I think, too, like I was thinking when Brother Howard was talking, he also mentioned not just direction, but redirection. Mm -hmm. And I think that is also spoken for in your story about, like, closing one door, which redirected you here to Indianapolis. So... I thought it was powerful when he, when Pastor Johnson was talking about these reasons and when he talked about specifically development, which I feel like is one of the um, reasons why God has me in this storm at the time. Um, he said, you may be doing everything right. You may be doing what you're supposed to do, but God is saying, that's not all that I have for you. I have more for you. I have a bigger plan for you. And that's kind of where I was going earlier with raising your expectations. Our plans may be just fine. We may think, hey, we got it under control, but God is saying, listen, I have something, I have so much more for you. And I had to send this to get you to sit down, to settle down, to listen, to quiet, be quiet, to pray, to focus, to watch all of the sermons, soak up all of the everything that you possibly could so that you can be ready when I send you this greater thing. So I just love it. I think it's amazing. And he also said that the one storm can do a multiplicity of things. And I was just like, my God, one storm can do multiple things in the same house. I was <laughs> like, what in the world? So it's just like, Dang, God. So when I think about me and my mom and my sisters, like when we connect on our family Zoom call, like this is doing different things for all of us in the same family. So I think it's incredible. Um, God, I'm grateful for the storms. And I can say that now as I get deeper into my faith, as I get um, deeper and closely connected to God, I'm grateful for storms. Man, that's, and that's how you know that you are maturing in your faith when you can... Well. Thank God for, for a storm, as, as James put it. Uh, use this as an opportunity to be joyful. Find some joy whenever you face trials of many kind. And so, I mean, I'm with you 100% on that. And I think for me, as you said, God sends storms for a multiplicity of reasons. And so in one, in one house, one family, one nation, right? One world, we're all going through the same storm, but all of us are experiencing something different about God, something different about our, our thinking, um, and just, I mean, I just want to become more, I'm using this time to become more disciplined. Um, and so I'm, I'm, you talk about going deeper. Like I was, uh, reading, uh, Luke five this morning when Peter, uh, was fishing all night, he didn't catch nothing. He let Jesus use his boat to preach. And, uh, Jesus says, go deeper. Like after he got done preaching, he said, you heard all this preaching now go deeper. And uh, when Peter let Jesus on his boat, he followed the instructions that came with Jesus because some of us got him on his boat, but on our boat, but we don't want to follow his instructions. Goes deeper, catches the fish. And I'm just thinking through like, man, Peter had been walking with Jesus already. Like Jesus had already healed his, his mother-in-law. He had already experienced miracles. He had already been hearing all this preaching, um, but he still had room to go deeper. And um, I feel like that is something that God has been laying on my heart. Like it's time for the people of God to go deeper. It's not enough just to come to church. So I'm going to shut down the church in order for you to just focus in on what it means to be a believer, what it means to be a person of faith. And God sent a storm 
to direct us, to redirect us, to develop us, to discipline us, and to destroy some things around us. But the good news is my, my, my. a storm doesn't last always. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. He pastor reminded us that there are restrictions to our storms. There's reasons why he sends, why God sends storms and sanctions storms, but we can rejoice over the fact um, that a storm has limits. It has restrictions. It has boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, this whole idea that God won't put us, put on anything on us that, that we can bear. Sometimes we, we underestimate ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and God says, I said, I will never give you anything that you can bear, not what you think you can bear. Um, and so God sends these storms to develop us, but he knows just how much we can bear. And he puts a stop to storms. Um, and so we can rejoice that a storm doesn't last always. Uh, but Nicole, do you remember what pastor said about what God uses to stop the storms? Woo wee. Yes. <laughs> Hear it. Woo wee. Yeah. Run around, Mr. Listen, that setup, that setup was everything. <laughs> when he, he broke it down and told us about the ruach, right? The breath, the wind, um, the air. And I just love how, um, again, he emphasized like God is not going to send creatures or politicians or healthcare professionals to end the storm. God is going to send God's spirit. And I was just, I, I'm telling you that got, that gives me chills, like thinking about it because again, it shifts our focus and our perspective. We're waiting on these external things to do for us what God, God said, I got you. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take it. Put your trust in me. And God is just sitting there waiting like, okay, <laughs> I'm waiting on you to come to me. As much as you worried about all these other people, I'm waiting on you to come to me. So I just think it was beautiful. God sends his spirit to calm the storm. And as I, I just, I'm confident in that. I trust in that. And I have peace. Yeah. About, yeah, that's good. And it reminds me of that storm that uh, the disciples were in and Jesus was asleep. Knocked out. Was scared, woke him up and Jesus calmed the storm with a word. My, my, my. Uh, and, that, and that too is a reminder that, that God's word has the power to stop storms, not just his spirit, but then also his word. Brother mm -hmm. Howard, how important is it for us as believers uh, to rest in that, right? Like we're dealing with a storm, you know, not just with uh, the virus itself, but then the effects of it, right? Social distancing, loved ones are passing, financial issues, uh, job insecurity, all these things. How is it, how important is it for us as the church, the believers, the people of faith to rest in the fact that yes, God sink, sent the storm and sanctioned the storm, but God can also stop the storm. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think it's vitally important and essential for us to rest in that fact, because the Bible does says God gives his beloved rest. And we can have peace about that as we deal with this pandemic. I know we want to take our own human ingenuity and try to get ourselves through this. But the Bible does say it's not by our might mm -hmm. and it's not by our power but it's by his spirit, says the Lord, and his ruach, his pneuma, that is what's going to get us through this. And if we know that God is our source and he's going to be our deliverer, we should have a peace in the midst of this pandemic. And I, once again, going back to what I said earlier, if we can rest in this when others are restless, people will ask us, what do you have that I apparently don't have, that you have some peace that passes all the understanding as it relates to this pandemic. And that gives us the opportunity to share our faith that our God is a deliverer. deliverer. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Yeah, and that's, that's, I love that scripture that you quoted at the top of that. God gives his beloved rest. I say, man, he must really love me because I'm going to sleep. I ain't <laughs> going to sleep. I don't care what's going around me. I'm a found, I'm a, Hey, I, I I didn't have this baby for eight months, but when he go to sleep, I go to sleep. I'm still getting my sleep, regardless of what's going on, because I know that the the people that God love and who love God, they going to sleep. Yeah. And as Pastor says, also he says, 
we know God never sleeps nor slumbers. Yes. So I can't go to sleep. So why are we losing sleep when we know he's up and he's going to make everything all right? Um, that should just give us a peace that passes everything that yeah. we go through. Yeah. And I love that. I love, you know, throughout scripture, we see like the people of God sleeping in the most obscene environments. Like, you know, like, uh, when when Daniel was praying, they put him in the lions, and he sleep with the lions. Jesus sleep in the back of the boat. David on the run from Saul, still going to sleep. Like Paul and Silas sleep in the in 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 the, in, the, in the jail cell, or Peter sleep in the jail cell. So it's like, regardless of the environment that we face, when our faith is in God, y'all, we can go to sleep. In that, God sends the storms, and God stops the storms, and in between all of that, God has us in His arms. God has us in God's hands, knowing that he is alpha and omega. And whatever goes in between the beginning and the end, God is working all of that out for the good because he has the power to stop the storm. God has the power to stop the storm. But even as he stops the storm, he he reassures us as well. Like he gives us a promise. Yeah. And as pastor says, there was there's a rainbow in the sky. And Noah experiences the first rainbow ever. And this first rainbow was a sign to Noah and his family that when you see another storm, it doesn't mean that I'm going to destroy you. It doesn't mean that I'm going to take you out. Um, so I'm going to give you this promise that I won't, I won't destroy you, you know, by, on, on, in the storm. I won't destroy you in the next storm. The next, the next time all this is going to be over is with fire. But I'm going to give you this rainbow as a sign that I got you covered, that I'm working all of this out for the good. And I wonder how many of us, Brother Howard, when we are open to the signs that, God's, that God gives us, that we can endure the storm, we can sail through the storm, knowing that, yes, the storm may not be over, but God is, he's showing me signs that he's in control. He's showing me signs that he can end the storm. Where do we find, where do we look for these signs at? I know Pastor gave us a hint on Sunday. Where, where, where can we find the signs to know that everything is going to be all right. The signs are in the word of God. And pastor told us we need to look up. I look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. And pastor Jay, I had to look at this um, part of the sermon and just start shouting at my house because um, I can personally relate, relate to this. And I have to give a legal um, analogy here where pastor was talking about this sign, this rainbow, and, and God said, this, is going, this sign is going to be a covenant that I promised to you. And we know that a covenant is, it's a contract between God and man, but it's a holy contract because God is involved with that. And I was thinking about the sign that God said, this rainbow is going to be a sign. Sign? Sign is the root word for signature. So God has this covenant. He has this contract <laughs> with us. And he said, I'm going to put a signature in the sky, the rainbow. And that is like God signing his name yes. on the covenant. And if we don't get rest in that, um, I don't know what's wrong with us. But I had an example of that last Wednesday. And as we're all dealing with this pandemic, it's impacting people's finances. It's impacting people's careers, their businesses. And I was looking on Facebook and I went to the memory section and a memory popped up on my page and it was something that I posted five years ago. And the memory was celebrating the 10th anniversary of my law firm and I posted Thanks be unto God for the things that he has done. Well, that was 10 years ago that I posted that five years ago. And now, like every other business, I'm wondering, man, how is my law firm going to make it through this pandemic? How are we going to survive? And on that memory day, that was the 15th anniversary of my law firm. And I started the law firm with two partners of mine but it was birthed out of a time of corporate fast at Eastern Star Church. And God had laid on my heart that this is the time that you should start your law firm. So I was thinking that 
Facebook memory was a sign. It was a promise that God gave me 15 years ago. And he's the author and finisher of our faith. So even though my law firm is in the midst of a pandemic, just like everyone else's business, I look up and I see the sign that God gives me as a promise. And I know everything is going to be all right. Man, that's good news, Doc. That's, that's good news and a wonderful reminder of the signature that is in the sky, signing off to, of the covenant, letting us know that he's going to be, God is going to be a God of his word and he's going to uphold his end of the deal so we can rest in that. We can, uh, we can go to sleep in that. We can stand on the promises of God, knowing that God uses these storms to develop or to discipline us, but whatever the case may be, he's going to put a sign up showing you that everything is going to be all right. And I love how pastor, as, as, as pastor was dealing with this whole idea of, you know, looking up, that's what the rain, the rainbows in the sky, look up, have the right perspective, have the right worldview about what you're going through. Nicole, although he dropped some scriptures, you know, reminding us of the importance of looking up, there are some things that we experience here on earth that causes us to have the wrong perspective. How do we overcome uh, these, these, you know, things in the past, our baggage, bad news, the stuff that's surrounding us? How do we overcome these distractions to, to make sure that our focus is up where the signs are? Mm, that's good. Well, first, I mean, like we've been saying, making sure that we rest in God's word. God gives us the promises in God's word. But we're not going to know them if we don't read the word. <laughs> so we don't know what God is promising us. If God says, if, if you lose your job and God promised to supply all of your needs, that's where you rest at. If you are dealing with sickness, if you are dealing with death, God says that God will comfort you. God says that he will never leave you or forsake you. Then you rest in that. So we have to first know what God's promises are <laughs> before we can even stand firm in what it is. So go to God's word, go to prayer, keep looking. I, I, I'm so stuck on this looking up. Like we have to keep looking up. It's so easy for us to be distracted and see everything that's going on around us. But as long as we keep looking up, there's nothing else we can, there's nothing else that we can do. And I love how Pastor Johnson said, too, about how those promises that God gave us, that was to help ease our fears. So God loves us enough to know, I know you're scared. I'm, 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 you're going through this. This is either destroying you. This is either um, disciplining you, developing you, redirecting you. I know this is happening to you. And I know that you're scared. But God sends us these promises, these glimpses, these, these little things that we have to pay attention to, to ease our fears. Yeah. So I think that that is incredible. And it's intentional. God is intentional. When the ark was built, the only window was up. Mm. So yeah. that's all people could do is look up. That's all Noah and the other seven people on the boat could do is look up. Oh, so Lord. we just have to be intentional and recognize that the promises are in God's word and we have to communicate with God to even know what God is promising to us. Yeah, that's good. And continuing just to be positive, having an overall we uh, have positive to. attitude, a grateful heart, um, even as Pastor mentioned in the sermon, kind of almost like the intro, you know, he says that many of us, we, we think so much about the stuff that we lost in a storm Ooh. and not so much of what we had, not so much yeah. as who was still in our life as opposed to crying over the people that left, right? Having a grateful heart, a positive attitude, continuing to look up, you know, regardless of what's going on, regardless of who is in your life or out of your life, knowing that, that God has signs. And when we have a healthy diet of the word of God, uh, consuming that good news uh, to help us deal with the, the fear of that bad news, we know that God is going to work all this stuff out for the good because God has not forgotten you. And yeah. God has not forgotten any of us. And we appreciate um, the omnipresent, the, om the omniscience of God, how God is omnipresent, um, all powerful, all knowing, everywhere at the same time. And we can rest in that. Um, and so as we land this plane, 
want to ask y'all a question uh, that will help the people who are tuning in. We are grateful for your virtual presence tonight. Um, so with, after everything we talked about, you know, God has not forgotten you. He'll, he'll, you know, put us in storms for a reason. He'll put restrictions on storms. Uh, he, he's given us signs to know that everything is going to be all right as long as we keep looking up. Uh, Brother Howard, how do we grow from here? Moving forward as the body of Christ, the people of God, as men and women, husband and wives, you know, friends and family, how do we grow from here? Excellent question. Um, because if we don't have any application to all of this, it doesn't matter. And I think we grow from this, uh, starting going back with verse one in Genesis chapter eight, where it says, but God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah in the midst of his storm. So when Noah came out of the storm, he remembered God. And I think what we have to do as we come out of the storms in our lives, as we come out of this pandemic, we know God has not forgotten about us. He remembers us. But when we come out, we should not forget who brought us out. So we have to remember God even after he delivers us. We can't get spiritual amnesia and think we brought ourselves out, that it was by our intellect. It was because of my degree. It was because of my resources. No, it was because of God's grace and mercy that he bestowed on us. And then in addition to that, I believe in the 20th verse of chapter eight, and that was after Noah came out of the, the flood, it said, Noah built an altar to the Lord. And he gave a sacrifice to the Lord. So we need to remember God, but then we need to rejoice. We need to celebrate. We need to praise God at his altar. And we need to give something that reflects the love and affection that we have for God and continue to stay in fellowship with our, family, our church family and those we have an impact on and our friends. Yeah, so I think good. that's how we can grow. Yeah, and I would like to I would like to, to 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 take it a step further. You talk about rejoicing, you know, when God delivers us, and because God inhabits the presence of our people, it's important for us to also rejoice while we're in the midst of it, right? As Paul would say, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. While he's writing that while he's in prison, amen. Uh, so we can even be while in, in a pandemic. Don't allow the pandemic to stop your praise and let God inhabit the praises of his people so that he can deliver us and even praise. And then we give God praise on the back end of that as well. Well, Pastor Jay, if I may just add, I've grown a little since I was a child in church, but I would hear the senior saints say, you don't have to wait until the battle is over. Yeah. You can shout right now. Now I've been through some things in my life. So now I know what that means mm. that we know God's going to deliver us, but we don't have to wait until we come out, we can give him praise, honor, and glory right now. We can shout right now, even before the battle is over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. We could praise God on credit, as they Amen. would say now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, where do we grow from here? I think um, we grow from here by expecting more. Um, expect more, not just from God, but even of yourself. Um, Pastor Johnson mentioned how God sometimes has more confidence in us than we do. So while it may look um, desolate, while it may look like, oh my God, how am I going to get through this? I dare you to expect more. I dare you to expect more of your God. I dare you to look at how amazing, how you're alive. <laughs> like Pastor Johnson said, you have life. You may have lost all of these other things, but you're still here. You still have God. You still have Jesus. Like, look at the things that you do have and expect that there is more to come. This is not all that God has for you. God loves you and cares for you deeply. So I would just say, um, raise your expectations. Do that through praying and not just through praying by talking, but listen listen to what god is trying to tell you listen to where god is trying to lead you and now we have so much more time some of us i dare write down a plan mm. right 
You've been talking about you want to do this. You've been talking about you want to write this book, start this podcast, start this business. You've been talking about you want to do all these things for like six months. I know all your, you getting on everybody's nerves talking about how you want to start this thing. Now you have nothing but time. So do some research, figure out how to work technology, figure out who you can look at. What are some models, some examples that you can dig into? Let's grow. Let's go deeper. Like you said, let's expect more, not just from God, but from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And let's not just expect to go back to how things used to be. People keep talking about a new normal. And I feel like God is saying, it's just like the scripture. I'm doing a new thing, right? So what are our expectations? What are we expecting new out of God? Let's not just want to go back to how things were, but how can we move forward? How can we be stronger collectively as families, as a body? How can we be stronger? How can we be better? Mm. And I believe God is looking forward. I believe God is going to do some amazing things. I do. I believe it too. Yeah. And, and let's not waste a pandemic, right? Let's not waste Let me tell yeah. you something. If you come out of the pandemic the same way you was a month ago, six weeks ago, that's yeah. on you. I don't yeah. even know what to do. That's yeah. on you. You plan. Yeah, you because ain't you ain't real at all. You ain't real. Everything you've been talking about, you weren't trying to do. Like, let's, let's do better. Let's be better, for real. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, man, I'm so I'm so excited uh, that we were able to share tonight, and I'm sure that somebody uh, was blessed um, by just going deeper, right, into the sermon. A lot of times we hear a sermon one time and let it go in one ear and out the other, and not give it time to settle in our spirits and rest in our hearts. And so this is what the debrief is all about: being able to engage uh, with a small group. And I encourage you to do just that as well uh, in your home, with your friends, people that you work with. Um, give them the sermon, have them listen to it and then talk about it. That's the only way that you and I uh, can continue, as the Bible says, to meditate on God's word uh, day and night. Um, and that we can grow in that word, not just hearing the promises of God, but remembering the promises so that when we go through our storm, we can look at the signs, knowing that everything is going to be all right. Brother Howard, my sister Nicole, thank you so much for uh, sacrificing your time to hang out with your boy on today. And uh, thank you all for listening, however you may listen. I appreciate those who shared, commented, liked, tagged some people in it. Uh, Let us continue to advance God's kingdom and get the gospel to as many people as we possibly can. Uh, My sister Nicole, pray us out tonight, will you? Yes, sir. Good and gracious God, we just Thank you so much for who you are. God, thank you for your promises. Thank you for the signs. Thank you for just being present and not forgetting about us. God, right now we lift up our city. We lift up our communities, our countries, our families. God, you are in control. And God, we trust you. We believe you. We honor you. We praise you right now while we're in the midst of. So God, please watch over those who may feel alone, may feel isolated. God, you know everyone's needs. So meet them where they are, financially, emotionally, spiritually, physically. God, comfort those who are dealing with loss, whether it is jobs, whether it is finances, whether it is loved ones, God. Let them feel your peace your love, and your arms wrapped around them. And God, we thank you for your Ruach. We thank you for the spirit, God. We thank you that you have not forgotten about us. So God, let us hold on to that. Let us hold on to the fact that you promised us that you would never leave us or forsake us. And most importantly, God, we love you, we praise you, and we honor you. God, we will not go back to the way things were, and we will love to go deeper with you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all you for tuning in. Uh, continue to um, be aware of everything that we're posting this week. And then, of course, this Sunday, our senior pastor will be back at it preaching God's word. And we pray that it will be a blessing to you and yours. I'm Pastor Jay. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.
peace. But I'm going to put this rainbow as a reminder to you because I don't want every time it's raining for you to have so much fear thinking you're not going to make it. I don't want every time it's sprinkled you thinking you're going to lose something. No, so I'm going to give you a promise. So when you have fear, then just look up. Look up to the rainbow, the promise that I've given to you. And that's my word to you today. That God puts rainbows in the sky. That God gives us promises. And all the promises of God are yes and amen. That God promised you that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. That God promised you all things work together for good to them that love God. That God promised you that yes, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God promised that you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And when fear sets in and uneasiness and inner anxiety and worry sets in, look up. Look into the hills from whence come up our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Look up. Set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. Look up. You can sit with Christ in the heavenly realm, the Apostle Paul says. We've been looking around us at all the mess, all the problems, all the pain. And God says, no, I want you to look up to the promises I have. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus.